Maisie back here at you this morning. Uh, I just can't get the Brian Dawkins situation out of my head. <laughs> uh, just happened to catch uh, Eagles uh, website this morning, Merle Reese and uh, Steve Spagnola, uh, Steve Spadaro. Spagnola, Spadaro, uh, don't matter anymore. Uh, talking about it, and uh, this was done before Saturday, so uh, Merle Reese was under the impression that the engine went this long, it had probably that he was going to sign with Denver, so uh, it just seems to be a, a, a different reaction from just about everybody you talk to, from shop to, well, he was getting old, hey, man. you know, uh, I'm getting tired of hearing about how old the guy was, he's 35 years old, made the Pro Bowl for seven times in mean, his 13 year career, that, that's pretty much the Pro Bowl every other year, so uh, no, I don't want to keep hearing about how old he was and getting slow and all this, but uh, I, I'm just wondering, does anybody uh, in Philadelphia or as an upper elite Eagles fan go out with Jeff Lurie, to, you know, to have a steak dinner and say, look, you know, you really need to sign Dawkins here before it gets to free agency? Uh, uh, Denver paid, you know, they paid top dollar for him, but... Uh, Still, man, um, I'm thinking Philadelphia could have matched that offer. They just signed Ocelio Hansen, a $4.2 million per year contract for, I think it was uh, four years, maybe five, I'm not sure about that. Uh, could have signed Dawkins for a three-year, uh, three-year, $5 million a year, and I think that would have been with with a clause in there the two years if something happens in two years and maybe like five or six million guaranteed I guarantee he would have stayed man he would he, he wasn't a jump ship for just a little bit of money so uh you know it comes right down to uh it's like a marriage uh if you disrespect your spouse long enough over the years they'll go where there's greener pasture uh, and where there's better benefits, and that's what Dawkins apparently has done, because to me it's a disrespect to not have, so, you know, not have them go out of their way or, you know, get right on the money and just say, look, you're, we're, we're keeping you here either by franchising him or, uh, or doing something to keep him there. But I'm here to tell you right now, and you I, uh, unless I'm 100% wrong, 199% wrong, the defense is not going to be the same anymore. The defense is going to be less uh, passionate. I see maybe Stuart Bradley or Chris Gokong or someone like that or Quentin Mako to have a little bit of passion about them. But it's not Brian Dawkins, man. And I'm telling you, I've been watching that dude since day one. And I'm here to tell you, he brought the lumber on every single play. He brought it, man. He left it. He left his heart on the field in more than one game, and I'm telling you, that's an irreplaceable ingredient in today's NFL players. Now, I don't know if anybody uh, sees that Quentin uh, Depps is going to be uh, the next Brian Dawkins, but I think they're going to be terribly fooled when they see exactly uh, how hard Brian Dawkins is to replace. So. Uh, I guess reality is it's got to be accepted now. Uh, I really would like to uh, would like to wish Mr. Banner uh, well. By this morning, there is about a foot of snow in Philadelphia. If he's walking the streets, I hope he falls and breaks his ass bone. Uh, that's about the worst I can wish for him, because his ass bone would heal. I mean, John Runyon did, so I'm sure his would. Uh, get in a hot tub up there in the uh, Noble Care Complex, and uh, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure his ass would heal up, but at least he would have a sore ass for at least eight, six, eight weeks, and every time he'd feel his ass hurt, that he'd know uh, what he'd done. I mean, that man is uh, is like the Gestapo. He's definitely Republican. He's a big wig corporate 
money grabbing uh, egotistical I don't know what the hell I'm just lost for words I don't want to yeah uh, uh, I won't go there but anyhow I, he, he's not a favorite in Philadelphia and I tell you he must have uh, must have something on uh, Mr. Lurie because let's Lurie listen to what he says and so that's why we don't have Brian Dawkins anymore and uh, you know we have players of less caliber and I, I just think that I don't know I've heard it both ways I've heard Will Dawkins could have settled for you know the less money if he really wanted to stay I mean you gotta look out for yourself you know the economy is not great and I can attest to that because uh, last year this time I had a really good job uh, and then I was offered another job from another company for just a little more money well not a little more money maybe a couple hundred dollars more on the week I left the job and went with that company and here I sat laid off so I left a good thing <laughs> went to what I thought was a better thing and ended up being unemployed so anyhow uh, about all I got to say, I want to give a shout out to Philly Heat, uh, Leroy, uh, Ripper Eagle, 96, Power Rangers, Philadelphia Sports, uh, Philadelphia Kid uh, 05, Philly the Kid 05, uh, all the uh, Philly Heat members. Man, I don't know why. I tell you what, we're going to have to really pick it up this year. Uh, I just don't know, man. <laughs> It's just like someone told you, you, you know, your best friend just passed away. Basically, that's how I'm feeling it, so. Anyway, uh, here's a, here's an oldie here. I'll let you hear some this year. An old-fashioned love song by Three Dog Night. To underscore our love affair with tenderness and 